It's one of those things almost everyone remembers from school. Lake Titicaca, a name to conjure with. South America, in the Andes, very high, very big, very beautiful. The reason for my journey on the Peruvian Altoplano, close to the Bolivian border, was to visit the lakeside town of Puno and trace the remarkable voyage of the Yavari. Welcome on board, man. Thank you very you? much. It's lovely to be here. Oh, it was built you. in 1861, a good old-fashioned steamship from Birmingham, England. Uh, Dickens had just published Great Expectations. The American Civil War was in full flight and local heroes Butch Cassidy and Sundance were still kids when the Peruvian government decided it needed a fighting ship on top of the Andes. Actually, it was a, 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 no, a gunboat. They were gunboats at the beginning. I mean, It was sister, built in Kitzwurm, 2,766 um, different pieces with no piece too big to fit on a mule. Many, many, uh, and that's just how it got here, by ship to the Peruvian coast, then by land on one of South America's earliest trains, finally ascending the mountains by mule. During its working life, the Yavari never did go to war. True, the lake forms national boundaries, but at this altitude, nobody in their right mind could feel like fighting. Early last century, it was left abandoned, until in the 80s, it was spotted by a determined Englishwoman. Preserved by the altitude and the fresh water, the ship was in remarkable condition. Captain Carlos Saavedra had left the Peruvian Navy and was in Africa when he heard about it. I didn't have a job. And then suddenly I received a letter from a friend of mine in Peru saying that there was a, a crazy English lady who bought this ship. Carlos travelled to England in search of his destiny. Uh, but, I mean, when Meryl saw the CV, I mean, she was, she was surprised, I mean, because something was missing. You know, something was missing. And I said, I mean, that's impossible. I mean, anything can be missing. I mean, I'm the right man. I have to be your captain, I said. But Mary kept saying, I mean, no, no, Carlos, something is missing. But what is missing? Anything is written here that, I mean, you are a stupid dreamer. So she asked me that, you know, Carlos, are you a stupid dreamer? And I said, yes. OK, now join me. So that was the starting point of this project with, I mean, the affair. I'm going to show you something which is important. Look at that, that is the original compass. Uh, well, the, the glass is broken, as you can see, but I mean, we prefer to keep it like that because it's original. The so, last uh, captain of the Yavari did something unusual. unusual. Knowing its importance, uh, he insisted that the original features were kept uh, when the ship was decommissioned. So things yeah. like the clock, yeah, the, the bell... The chronometer. The chronometer. Nautical terms. The chronometer, the telescope. Even the address where it was built is still written here. And this is the original steering wheel? That is the original steering wheel. And um, something that is important, I mean, to point out, to see, look at that, the, the steering wheel. That is, the, that is the right position, actually. Because, I mean, usually, uh, don't think that we Peruvian sailors are stupid in the sense of, but that's the you front. know, we're going to sail like that. No, no, it's not like that. I mean, actually, you need two, two sailors, two helmets, one here and the other one here. Ah. Uh, and that is the, the captain's place. Look at that. According to Carlos, it's the oldest working diesel engine in the world. The original steam engine proved impractical. The only fuel was llama dung. It used to be run on llama dung because that was the only um, combustible available that we used to have here. It was not just the ship that appealed to Carlos. Lake Titicaca, the highest navigable lake in the world, was something of a challenge and an inspiration. The Euro are the local indigenous people, famous for their use of the reeds that grow so profusely in the lake. They build with it, they make boats with it, they eat it. 
that is the feed that they actually eat. Mm. What's it taste like? Mm, nothing. But it's very good. <laughs> but very good, tell, nothing. But it's very rich in iodine. 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 Um, and that's why these people, I mean, the, the skipper of, of our boat, uh, he's an Aymara. Mm -hmm. And they don't have any problem with the teeth. The Euro and Aymara of Lake Titicaca are also famous for their warlike spirit. They defeated the Incas and are now doing a pretty good job of dealing with the new invaders, the tourists. Tourists from all around the world come here to marvel at the famous floating reed islands and generally get a wedding thrown in. In fact, the weddings are so frequent, you can't help but wonder if the divorce rate is equally high, or at least question whether some people are double dipping. Is it my imagination, or do people around Puno have more than the normal number of parties? <laughs> no, no, you're right. I mean, actually, but I think they deserve it. You know, because, I mean, to live here at this altitude, uh, in order to... To, to have your life more, more kindly, let's call it like that, I mean, you have to dance. The guidebooks tell you about the exotic floating reed islands on Lake Titicaca. What they don't tell you is that they're not traditional at all. Honestly, is this traditional or is it something that they've dreamed up for the tourists? Wow, it's a good question. That Carlos felt we hadn't really experienced the true indigenous culture. On the other side of the lake, he said, things were different. So we crossed the lake, almost to the Bolivian border. I don't know what I expected. Maybe an ancient people harmonizing with nature on the roof of the world. Certainly what we got, yes, you guessed it, another wedding. 